So this uh, <clears throat> last chapter um, treats two kind of distinct things. One of them is a singularity and how it relates to, to other container software like, like Docker. So we have been only using Docker in the exercise up till now. Now we'll do some exercise with singularity as well. And I will of course introduce you to the software. And in addition to that is uh, some information about how you can uh, use containers inside pipelines. And we will show some uh, small examples on how to use containers in, for example, uh, Snakemake or Nextflow. All right, so why Singularity? We already have this great software called uh, Docker, so why would we need some other software to work with containers? Well, one major reason for uh, using Singularity is to be able to uh, easily run containers on a high-performance compute cluster, or uh, more specifically, on a uh, computer that um, uh, is used by uh, multiple people. So on a uh, high-performance compute cluster or uh, servers in general, uh, that uh, multi-user servers in general, uh, users have different levels of privileges. Uh, usually you have one or two people that <clears throat> have, uh, for example, root access and others, they can, they do have access to some directories and, and not to others, for example. Um, in addition, uh, what's also often the case, especially for high performance compute cluster, is that users submit jobs uh, to a specific node, for example, to a different node with some time memory or, or CPU restrictions. So that's usually well what you do if you use a job scheduler like, like Slurm. Um, these are two things that Docker doesn't really facilitate very well. So uh, to use Docker to its full extent, you almost always require super user privileges, meaning that you kind of have to be uh, root on the computer you're using Docker at. Um, and in addition, um, so that makes it difficult to use on HPC. You don't want to give everybody uh, super user privileges, of course, because otherwise people might destroy stuff. Um, <clears throat> and in addition, uh, these Docker commands, as we have learned, are an API of a daemon. And the daemon always runs in the background and is therefore parentless. And that means kind of that you cannot really ship a, a, a status of a daemon to a different node and do the calculation there, for example. So it's difficult to uh, have your collection of images, for example, that you now have on your computer and then ship that entire thing to a specific node to do a specific uh, calculation. So that's why Docker is not really made for high performance compute clusters and we need something else. Well, Singularity can help you with that. Uh, one very important feature of Singularity is that your user identity and therefore also permissions are the same inside the container as outside the container. Meaning that if you run a container with Singularity, you have exactly the same permissions inside the container. That of course um, gives some issues when you're developing a container, for example, um, if you are on your high performance compute class and you want to develop a Singularity container, then you still have the same permissions. So you're not root anymore inside your container. So you cannot install uh, specific things, but there are ways to work around that. And Singularity uh, is a child process. So there's no daemon there, um, meaning that you can just take a container or take an image, execute it as a container somewhere on a distant node and then uh, stop it. And then also, of course, then restrict memory, time and CPU usage of that container. Uh, that also means that images are files because you have to move your uh, images around or at least it has to be um, <clears throat> executed uh, somewhere um, and you have a different Im image format compared to, um, to, to Docker. The fact that uh, images are files, of course, uh, therefore you can almost, uh, for, for a large part, you, lo you lose the nice advantage you have with Docker where you can reuse these, these layers. So if you store an image with singularity, so it's stored on disk and it is really the entire image that is stored in that file. 
So when should you use Docker? When should you use Singularity? Um, basically, you can do most of the things with both Docker and Singularity. But in practice, what often happens is, especially with mathematicians, but also with other people, with other, uh, with other professions, uh, people tend to use Docker for, for example, container development, uh, for testing of, of scripts, for example, for using them for continuous uh, integration, continuous development. So you can really, uh, when you are making some changes to a software package, for example, you can, it's very nice to uh, use uh, Docker containers to test those uh, scripts in. Uh, and for, for sharing images, particularly uh, through uh, Docker Hub. And most bioinformaticians use Singularity if they just want to deploy an image on a high-performance compute cluster. So uh, there's a very basic uh, command of Singularity. It's called Singularity Pool, like Docker Pool. And you can just directly pull images from uh, Docker Hub and convert them into a Singularity image and directly use them with Singularity. Um, you can also use Singularity without Docker. Um, there are, for example, uh, similar files to Docker files, which are called Singularity recipes uh, that you can write. And uh, with, um, based on that Singularity recipe, you can build an image. Uh, there is Singularity Hub, meaning you can both share and build images uh, directly on Singularity Hub. Oops. Uh, but you have to take into account that you have the same permissions inside as outside the container. So in order to build a singularity image, you would need to do that uh, somewhere where you actually ha do have root access. Can be a Linux computer, for example. But what you can also do is, is build a singularity definition file and then build the image on a runner somewhere. Um, I think uh, I did that few months ago, and I think Singularity Hub has a runner that you can use to actually build your Singularity images. Um, <clears throat> so you can do that either with a fake boot option or build with an external runner. Um, of course, it's not uh, entirely necessary. So as I just said in the previous slide, what people tend to do is they develop with Docker, they test with Docker, um, and ship with Docker, but then if they uh, want to use that on a high performance compute cluster, they just use Singularity Pool to convert a Docker image into a Singularity image. So that's about Singularity. And the exercises we will use uh, Singularity to do exactly that. So uh, what it will do is you have uploaded a uh, image to um, Docker Hub, and we will use Singularity now to actually pull that image and convert it into a Singularity uh, image, and then actually execute it with Singularity and see whether it still works, yes or no. Then a few words about pipeline development. Um, so the whole idea, of course, about pipelines, or not the whole idea, maybe 80% of the idea of pipelines is reproducibility. Um, and um, reprodu but reproducibility, we mean that you can, for example, build a pipeline once, or your colleague can build a pipeline once, and you can just move it to your specific um, uh, cluster, for example, and you should be able to do exactly the same calculations as your colleagues. Well, actually, I think you can almost say the only way to do that is with containers. So with containers, you can uh, uh, exactly uh, have a duplicate of a comp computational environment uh, as uh, somewhere else. So usually containers are used inside pipelines or that at least that's done very often. Um, luckily, you don't have to uh, develop these containers yourself. Or of course, if you have a specific part of your pipeline where you have developed a specific script for, of course you can. Uh, but a lot of very common bioinformatic tools, um, just name them FOSQC, bad tools, um, pretty much everything that is on Bioconda is also packed inside a container. So you can directly just uh, pull from um, 
in bio containers uh, the image for, of your tool of interest and use that inside your pipeline. So how do you use them in a pipeline? Uh, I have two examples, one of Nextflow, one of Snakemake. Uh, this is an example of Nextflow. With Nextflow, you can specify, and that actually also counts for Snakemake, you can specify containers at multiple levels. Um, here, I, I have an example of specifying a container directly in the process. So you really specify, okay, within this specific process, I want to use this specific container and you can just use the namespace and a repository uh, on, on Docker Hub. And then the entire, so Nextflow takes care of all the um, user identities if you're running in Docker or uh, Singularity and executes the command uh, directly inside your co the container. And it will use um, base, uh, yes. So it will use the command of that container, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure. So I think if you have an entry point, you might run into issues here. Um, for SnakeMake, it looks uh, pretty similar. Um, there you specify that in, in a rule. So um, in Nextflow, you call the process. In SnakeMake, you call the rule. Uh, you have your input and your output and your, uh, for example, your shell command in a snake make rule. And then you can also specify a container in which that uh, rule should actually run. For both of them, you can also specify containers at higher levels. Uh, you can, for example, have containers that uh, can handle multiple, um, <clears throat> multiple different processes or rules. And then you can specify the container only once and refer to that container inside your process for Nextflow or inside your rule with, for example, labels and, labels and tags. Um, you can take it a step further um, because both SnakeMake and Nextflow support the use of both Conda, Docker, and Singularity. So you can specify whether you want to uh, use Conda to uh, run your process or rules in Docker or, or Singularity. And you can actually combine those. So you can, uh, with both SnakeMake and Nextflow, you can say, okay, I'm going to specify a Conda environment, for example, in a Conda YAML file. Um, and then you can say to the, um, to, the, to, the, to the pipeline software, okay, build me my containers based on these Conda environments. And that is quite nice because you can, um, you make your, uh, um, your, your pipeline very uh, diverse. So meaning that a user can choose to you to um, to run your pipeline with Conda, with Docker, or with Singularity. And the only thing you have to specify as a developer is only the Conda YAML file, where you have all your dependencies uh, specified with all their versions in there. So um, by doing that, um, you are very close to making very scalable and reproducible pipelines because you can use all three of those tools in order to um, make reproducible calculations. So how would that work? Well, here's an example for SnakeMake. So let's say you have your Conda environment defined in a YAML file. So this is how one of those YAML files typically look. So you, have, you specify channels, you specify dependencies with their versions, and then you can say in your SnakeMake rule, okay, if you're using Conda, uh, use this particular YAML file. And then if you then uh, execute SnakeMake with a Conda flag, what it will do is create uh, a Conda environment based on, the, on that YAML file and then uh, execute uh, your, this particular rule inside that Conda environment. Once you have this spec um, specified, what you can do is use SnakeMake to actually containerize this, these um, uh, Conda environments. And it will create a Docker file for you. So uh, entirely automatically, you can build that Docker file and make a container or make an image out of it and then specify that particular container in your SMK file. And then what uh, you can, what's then nice is you both have your Conda environment specified, but also uh, 
uh, specified what image to use if you are using containers to run uh, that particular rule in or that particular set of rules in. And then um, if a user is using your pipeline, what we can do is uh, at the snake make uh, executable level, you can say, okay, I want to uh, execute my pipeline using Conda, Singularity or Docker and everything will work and everything will be based on that particular uh, Conda environment YAML file. There's a question of Ruben, I think. Yeah, I mean, I see some similarities here, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, with make files, new system. Like you give some recipes and some dependencies on, on building a pipeline. Is that similar to this, um, for instance, snake file? Um, or? Yeah, so I don't have too much experience with make files. Um, yeah, basically, I mean, me neither. I just started also a few weeks ago with, and but basically, you can you can write an, uh, a list of recipes, mm -hmm. and and those recipes are also commands which are interdependent of other files or other tasks. Mm -hmm. So in order to execute, let's say in your case, is the final plot or plot stuff. You need probably the, some input files and you need probably some processing file in between and some stuff like this. So you build the whole pipeline somehow, and then at the end you have your your final. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Snakebake Nextflow. So that that's of course um, that's a, that's a whole other topic than containers. So they uh, Snakebake and Nextflow they they use containers. Um, well, they can use containers uh, while they are. Uh, running uh, the pipeline, but the concept of SnakeMaker and Nextflow is indeed describing these pipelines. So mm -hmm. what should happen when, and if I have different input files, uh, they can uh, very nicely um, perform the calculations for you in the correct order. And that's everything you have specified in these in these rule, rule files. Yeah, yeah, I think it's similar. But yeah, I mean, I will probably share some information so you can have, oh, for everybody, you can have a look. Yeah, at sure, it. sure. That's fine. Okay, thanks. So the big advantage of this, so if you are interested in reproducibility, really have uh, a look at this. In particular, if you're looking, if you're using SnakeMake, Nextflow has similar functionality. Uh, for SnakeMake, I've put the link to uh, the documentation on how uh, to do this at the bottom of this of this slide. Um, so big advantages is that you specify your environment only once, and that's only in the YAML file. For for the rest, you don't care too much, uh, or you don't care about what kind of installations you have to do. Specify it in the YAML file. In this case, SnakeMake will make a Docker file uh, for you. The only thing you would need to do is just have to build it. And then you can just run your, your pipeline in either Conda or Docker or Singularity. It very much improves readability because you have your uh, everything specified in this, in this YAML file, which is relatively easy to read. And if you compare it to Conda, uh, maybe you have run uh, pipelines with Conda before. And if you rerun a pipeline, especially with SnakeMake, it needs to re-download, reinstall, and everything, all the Conda dependencies if you're rerunning your pipeline. And that's not necessary if you have containers available because we'll just reuse the already downloaded container. So we have some exercises um, the, that will consist of um, converting your own uh, Docker image to a singularity uh, image, and that will be basically or only just by running the command uh, singularity pool. Um, we will do some uh, execution of containers and, and mounting with singularity. So with singularity, you can also mount directories. It happens in a different way. Actually, by default, um, all, uh, of the, um, all of your environment is actually mounted already by default inside the container. Um, and what you also do is use biocontainers, uh, biocontainers image to do some actual bioinformatics. So uh, we will use the FastQC uh, container at biocontainers in order to do some quality control on, on sequence reads. 